My name is Dr. Richard Harrison and I'm the program leader for both the Engineering and Physical Sciences and the Mathematics Foundation Year program at the University of Surrey. To start with the Engineering and Physical Sciences Foundation Year, this is a program which is based around uh, a, math, a core of mathematics and physics and substantial exposure to uh, laboratories as well. So students joining the Engineering and Physical Sciences Foundation year will typically study mathematics throughout the whole of the year as well as related physics courses and also a number of computing laboratories and engineering and science laboratories. And this programme is designed to prepare students for entry to undergraduate year one in mechanical engineering, civil, en civil engineering, chemical engineering, electrical engineering and physics based programmes. The Mathematics Foundation year is um, similar in the sense that it contains a, a very high proportion of mathematics, in fact more than the Engineering and Physical Sciences Foundation year. Um, there's also a substantial computing component, but students on the Mathematics Foundation year won't have the Engineering and Science laboratories as the students on the Engineering and Physical Sciences Foundation year would. And of course this uh, programme prepares students for entry into year one of math uh, mathematics-based um, degree programmes. Okay, well, it will depend on the, to an extent on the options that um, the students choose, but perhaps if I could generalise in terms of looking at the core modules, which would be common to all students. So, um, in the Mathematics A module, which is a semester one module uh, that's taken by the engineering students and the mathematics students, um, there's typically two lectures and two tutorials a week. Um, there's a compulsory um, computer lab module as well, and typically this will be two hours of laboratory classes a week, plus a substantial amount of self-study and uh, coursework as well, which students are expected to complete in, in their own time. So that's giving us six hours. Uh, in addition to that, there's the principles of engineering and physical sciences, which amounts to about four hours a week. So that brings us up to 10. Um, students that are doing laboratory classes, um, it varies a little bit because they may have um, laboratories one week, but not the next week and so on. Um, but that might amount to around 12 hours a week. So in total, including the laboratories. So depending on which options the students take, typically there would be around 12 to 14 hours a week of contact time. Well, I think the, a lot of it, I, I think, comes down to self-discipline because if students kind of come on to the foundation year thinking, oh, it's, I'm on the foundation program, I'm automatically going to progress, I don't really need to do that much, that's perhaps the not a good attitude to take. And I think many of our students actually find it um, quite a bit more challenging than they, they expected. Certainly in the second semester in terms of the, the level of the work, the actual academic content, and the amount of work that they have to do. So it really does involve, I think, transitioning from, from being told what to do at school to becoming more independent and realising that it's not just about turning up to lectures and tutorials and that's enough. They, the students have to do work in their own time. Um, depending on their backgrounds, some students may have to do a lot more work than others. So I, I would say the key really to success is having um, good motivation and developing good study habits as well and making sure that um, you're doing work in your own time uh, as well as turning up to all of the lectures and tutorials and lab classes. Okay, well there's um, a number of options available here. I mean, some students can resolve the issues themselves and that is actually the, the best and most kind of mature and independent way of approaching the problem by kind of taking responsibility and saying, you know, I've got, um, I've got a problem with this, um, I don't know what to do, and actually kind of finding out for themselves a way forward, um, either by um, 
you know, seeking help from one of the, the centres, for example, the, um, the MASH centre, the Maths and S Statistics Hub in the library, if it's a maths related problem, or alternatively joining university societies in, in maths and physics and so on, um, where they, they often provide additional support informally through those societies. Um, of course, students can approach their personal tutor um, they can ask them for further guidance or alternatively they could go directly to the, the module leader if it's a particular module that they're having problems with. And we do find that um, over the course of the year our students take all sorts of approaches. That some of them, you, you know, they, they're, they're struggling but we don't even know about it because they've managed to address it themselves. So they've been able to identify that they're, they're not making as good a progress as they would like, and they've taken the responsibility upon themselves to do something about it. Um, others might come to us and uh, as a personal tutor or a module leader and ask for some advice on, on how to manage and coping with a particular subject area. Um, others, um, the ones that we uh, we would least sort of recommend is that we have to identify students um, who are not um, making good progress and they haven't approached us or they haven't tried to address the problem themselves and we have to sort of chase them up because perhaps they've done really badly in a couple of in-class um, tests or something like that and then usually we have to call in the student for, for a meeting and, and actually discuss if there's any other issues which are going on in the background that we, we don't know about. Generally, they, they tend to fall into the smaller proportion of the students who, who face difficulties, but I would say the vast majority either identify the issue and take responsibility for that and deal with it themselves, which is the, the best, most independent and positive way of dealing with it, or alternatively, they are identified as an issue and they come to speak to their, their personal tutor or the module leader, which again, it's a very good positive approach that the majority of students fall into that category and that the sort of minority, we have to chase after them because it's clear from their, their progress that they're not doing well and, and also they're not doing anything about it either. Well, I would say the the first one is be prepared to be flexible. So I think that's the one of the most significant changes that students undergo when coming to university, whether it's by direct entry to an undergraduate programme or joining a foundation year programme, is the emphasis on taking responsibility for their own learning and becoming independent. It's not like a school where there's always a teacher looking over your shoulder and saying, right, you've got to do this, hand in your homework by uh, six o'clock on Friday, that sort of thing. It, do it doesn't work like that at university. So I think the students have got to be prepared from the outset to, to kind of take on responsibility and become more independent. So that's my number one tip. My number two tip, which is related to the first one, is in general, um, you need to do much more study than is just given in the, the lectures and tutorials. So there's a considerable amount of work that needs to be done in your own time. Again, that comes back to having good discipline, good time management, and um, again, having a good responsibility, a good sort of positive approach to your, your studies. And another, I, I would say that the third, the third point, again, related to the first two is, is time management and in particular deadlines. Um, it's very common, and I'm not saying all students do this, but it's very common for students to leave their coursework submissions or preparation for exams or in-class tests up until the last minute, especially if there's two or three assessment deadlines that are close together. So for example, in one particular week, they might have a coursework submission, they might have um, perhaps two in-class tests or something similar. So it's really important to plan ahead for those and start, you know, start the coursework when it's issued rather than two days before it's due in. So time management and, and discipline in terms of managing the assessment. So I would say those three things are very, very closely linked together, but they, they are perhaps the most important um, uh, areas in terms of developing the the type of skills that you need to be successful at university. The actual academic content itself, it's 
it's manageable, even if it's a new, a new topic area, it's something different, provided you've got the good study skills and motivation, then you can overcome those academic challenges.